time where we left off was the bond beam and you can see it uh, we made quite a bit of progress from the bond beam the bond beam is actually two uh, bag layers down so it's around this area and if you recall there are pieces of rebar sticking up that we intended to put the bags through and you can see we successfully did that and cobbed over it as well so here's the rebar and we actually made a second layer of the bond beam that continues all around the house. It's made out of steel 2x4s. And all we did was we welded the rebar to the steel 2x4. And that basically sandwiches the two layers and makes it a more solid structure. Now, right here, you can see we made the roof, but I'll get to that in a minute. Right here is the support structure for the roof. It's welded to the 2x4s I was just talking about. And this is basically just to keep the, the weight from the roof. It, it resists sag from this tremendous amount of weight that is put over these purlin. So you can see we have several smaller pieces of purlin in vertical directions going up reinforcing this. Welded from our gas powered arc welder. As you can see right here down in the base. After that, you can see this 2x4 sandwiching bond beam structure is supporting these, which act as the roof trusses. These are barrel racks, and recycled barrel racks that we picked up off of um, Craigslist. So you can see that all we did was we just welded it to the bottom of the 2x4 bond beam and put it up of roughly 4 feet and then this spans, or this barrel rack spans the entire roof structure and supports it from back to front. One of the other things I forgot to mention was in between these barrel racks we're going to put smaller windows to create a draft from our cooling tubes down there up into this so it would suck cold air out of the ground and pull hot air out. But moving on, here are our purlin that span the structure horizontally. These purlin we welded to the barrel racks with the same gas arc welder. And uh, you can see we have, let's say, eight or nine or ten spanning this entire uh, structure front to back and this is the galvanized roofing that we picked up or salvaged from an old barn farm and um yeah this is going to be the the actual ceiling surface we're going for a rustic kind of vibe and if you haven't noticed already the structure, this wooden structure that I'm standing on is the loft where the bed is going to be. Our, we're going to fit this with a clean mattress and right here, right in here, is going to be the area for the stairs. And um, I'm about 5'9", so this would be plenty of headroom for anyone laying down or crouching, kind of standing up. So, in the name of convenience, and we'll be going up on the roof in the next scene just to show you our next improvement. And on top of the galvanized roofing, we have long uh, 10 or 12 foot 2 by 4 spanning the structure vertically. These are what we attached our R23 roofing insulation onto. This stuff we picked up off of Craigslist from a local buyer. And um, then we had sandwiched all of the insulation down with pieces of 2x4, which would drill through both sides into this piece of 2x4. This would then, as I would said earlier, sandwich these two and just hold the entire sheet of insulation very sound onto the roof.
roof. So the longer sections of the 2x4s which sandwich downwards. You determine that angle using the slap snap line, which you drew across the entire diagonal distance of this roof. Then we measured in two foot intervals all on each side. So we got this slanted sandwich kind of thing going on. And then um, the reason why these are going to be slanted is that way the this is east. So the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So in the morning, all the cool air will be over here. And no, I'm sorry. In the afternoon, all the cool air will be over here. And at the hottest part of the day, all the hot air will be over here. And if you notice, the slant of the roof goes upwards in this direction. So it would suck the cold air from over here and pull all the hot air out in this way. So it would create a natural convection current. This would cool down the roof even further. And in this Texas heat, you need that. And once we finish fitting all the custom panels, which are going to need to be cut and fit separately at different sizes, we can then move on to our final layer of the roof. This is going to be our final layer of the roof, which is also recycled from a neighbor across the street who recently replaced theirs. This is, um, this is a nice long sheet and it's painted which we preferred over the galvanized so it wouldn't have any chemical wash off and over here you can see our larger stacks and there's another even larger stack on the other side of those trees so those are our recent improvements thank you for watching